In about a minute I'm going to go, so I got to get ready to go to work. But I was just thinking about language. Language actually makes things bigger than what it is. I mean, in a funny way, you can actually experience reality. Realities that you actually don't really experience because of language. Because of our ability to actually produce language and, and use it. You know, I'm not a linguistic and I, I, I don't, you know, I'm not a philosopher of linguistics and things like that. But I just realized that language is very powerful because it actually gets us to experiences. Or at least what I can call, I'm, I'm going to use a term that I invent. I'm going to call it pseudo-experience. I don't know, maybe there is such a word. I'll Google that up and see if, if I didn't already take somebody else's word. But it creates pseudo-experiences. Experiences that really aren't experiences, but it feels like an experience. You know, you ever think about being wealthy, being rich? If you had the experience of being rich, what would that feel like? You know, when I was a kid, I had the experience of being rich, even though I wasn't rich. Because it was what I thought, it's, it's like the feeling. Like I had more than I needed when I was in a certain situation. Like having more than I needed, more than I could use, and an overabundance of stuff. But anybody else looking at that would say, you are a long way from being rich. But from my perspective, I was. I had the experience. And then I became aware that I wasn't rich, you know. It, it's something that exists in your awareness. There's certain things, pseudo-experience. It's just like being in a situation where you're blessed. You know, what does it feel like to be blessed? What if you think you're blessed and then later on you find some facts out that you realize, no, I'm not really blessed. Because what happens is when that feeling is there and then when it disappears, it has to do with the way in which you frame it in your mind. It has to do with the way in which you frame things in your mind. Now, we can do that at will. You know, you can feel like you're blessed. And I always try to make my every day of my life feel like a blessing by focusing on what's good. You know, I focus on what's good, what's positive, what's worth doing, what's worthy. Yeah, the reality is, is a, a everything, but you don't focus on everything. You know, think about it. You don't focus on everything in reality, because you couldn't. If you focused attention equally on everything, you, you wouldn't survive. Imagine you were crossing the street, and suddenly you notice there's a car coming at you. And you suddenly notice, you react, you get out of the way. Well, you, have to, you eliminate focusing on everything else except that car coming at you, and what you have to do, your reaction of doing. Everything else fades in the background. So we don't focus on everything. There is a kind of mental discrimination of everything. We, we, we're biased in that moment. We focus on one thing and minimize everything else. And it's the same thing when it comes to looking at your life. You know, it's just like people can do that on the negative side when it comes to, like when they have a problem. They may have a problem. And they focus on how bad it is and how terrible it is. And, oh, my God, this is just so terrible. And, you know, a person might get to the point where they may consider committing suicide, may even do it. Because they took that problem and they focused so much on it. But if they had taken a different frame, a different way of looking at it. Yeah, the problem is not going to go away, but you also realize the problem, though it is a problem, isn't that bad in a larger picture of things. And some things aren't that good in a larger picture of things. Sometimes we get overexcited about something. We put so much hope in a person. You know, like a politician, like a president. You know, or some people think that when, once that president gets elected, everything is going to change. The whole world is just going to be a completely different new place. And then all of a sudden, when that person becomes president, they realize life is pretty much like what it was before. I think at the end of the day with everything in life, you begin to realize that no matter how excited you get or how disappointed you are, you know, after a period of time, everything kind of comes back into balance. I think that's kind of like what, uh, what uh, Daniel Gilbert was talking about in this book called Stumble Into Happiness. And basically, we kind of have a balance level. We get excited and we think things are going to make us happier than they really are, and it doesn't. 
and we think certain things are going to make us more miserable than it really is. And it really doesn't. You just have to give it time and you realize things balance out eventually. I mean, you can do things to make your life better. There are things, deliberate things you can do to improve the quality of your life. But there's also deliberate things you can do to make the quality of your life worse. Most times when we're miserable, sad, depressed, it's not because we're deliberately doing it. Though. We do it by mistake. We do it because we're following what other people do, and we wind up feeling just as bad as they do. But you can also change things. What's the point of this video? Just to talk about the fact that you do have some control over things. That's all.